This is Bowtie David. Welcome to the Bowtie Gardens. We're in the side yard right now. In the summer, this place would normally be getting sun by now, but it's not summer. It's February. And uh, it's just barely, you can see the sun right there on the edge, but I am going to do a quick compost batch. And I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but I wanted to take you along on this journey. Uh, this is kind of patterned after the 18-day uh, compost video done by, I want to say it's Billy at Permapasture Farms. It's one of the channels I subscribe to, and uh, I'll put a link in the description to the video. Um, he's got some really good stuff. He's very knowledgeable. They're, they're, they're doing some amazing stuff with all kinds of things, chickens and cattle and gardening and everything. But uh, anyway... Um, one of the things that they do in this method is they start off with a with a uh, a bed of animal bedding, which is what this is. And if you've been following my channel, you know I got a new load of uh, horse compost, horse bedding compost, and it's very heavy in wood chip. And uh, so I need to get some of this processing. Now, what Billy says and. I get your name if i've gotten your name wrong i apologize ahead my brain my add brain just does not remember things as well as i wish they did sometimes i'm pretty sure it's billy uh but anyway he says that uh first thing you need to do is start off with a good foundation of this brown stuff horse bedding or animal bedding uh and this has got all kinds of stuff in it that you might see in a horse stable as you might expect and so uh, what you want to do, he, he was very clear, make sure you have watered it down. In fact, he says water to the ground before uh, you start. And when you think you have enough water, you don't. You need more. And I know water takes a while to sink down in and all. But anyway, so this is kind of a lasagna thing. And, and he gives credit to Frank Lawton. And I'm, I've seen some of Frank Lawton's work, and uh, he is super knowledgeable. In fact, Billy's son actually went to New Zealand, I think, or, yeah, I think it's New Zealand, and, and went to his school for a while to learn compost, which is pretty cool, if you ask me. But anyway, so here I am spraying about uh, four gallons a minute of water on this uh, bed. And the next layer that's going to go on here is green stuff. And I have luckily acquired the job of cutting the grass for one of my neighbors that's not living here. Has a place they go to on their vacation. But I'm going to uh, cut the, that grass and put it on here. I just wanted to get this started. So I really think that's... I put a good amount of water in there. In fact, based on this... Uh, video i put uh 12 13 maybe 14 gallons of water on here and yeah, plus all the stuff i've already put on before i started this video hi i'm bowtie dave So that first layer is about a third of a yard. My wheelbarrow, this wheelbarrow right here, 10 wheelbarrows makes up a yard, which is three feet by three feet by three feet, a cube of whatever. And so about three, a little over three wheelbarrow loads of the brown stuff on the bottom. The next is two more wheelbarrow loads actually probably a little less of uh, a layer of grass cutting from the neighbor's yard and again this stuff needs to be soaked down real good uh, put a kink in my hose uh, of course i did soak the ground before i think did i already say that i can't remember but uh, this is several inches of green stuff. Now, that there's a lot of stuff out there about the exact measurements of green to brown. And 
I tell you, some people swear by certain ratios, and I think the ratio is probably, you know, someone may have a little bit more success in their with their uh, content, you know, the stuff that's in their compost at their ratios or whatever. I've, I have not had enough content to really be able to decipher any better ratios yet. So I am still learning this process, but you can see I'm, I'm wetting it down really good. And then I'm going to put that load of uh, brown on top of here. And I'll probably put one more load of brown. A pile is not very big. Now, another thing that Billy says to do is to start this off in a cage. And I completely understand starting it off in a cage and keeping it in a, in a very tight round pile. I do not have what I need to do that right now. And I really need to get this going. And I'm just going to make this pile. I actually have enough room here. Because what's going to happen is this is going to set for a few days. And then we're going to turn it over to this area right over in here. And uh, hopefully the bees won't mind me turning compost in their backyard over here. But uh, I'll be turning this thing. And after on day four or day five, I think it's day five, you turn this every uh, couple days. And this thing gets hot. And there's a lot of weed seeds in here, I know. But if this thing gets hot enough, it won't matter. They'll all get killed. All the weed seeds will get eaten up and uh, not be viable anymore. So we're going to go through this. And uh, today is the 25th of February. Let's see how long this takes. I'm very curious. So that's another two wheelbarrow loads of brown on top of the two wheelbarrow loads of green. Started off with three wheelbarrow loads. And, and I don't know if I said this, my... Uh, my ADD brain that likes to count things coincided with my OCD brain that's kind of weird anyway. And uh, I know that 10 shovel and spadefuls will fill that wheelbarrow, and 10 of those makes a yard. So I measure everything in tenths of a yard. So we're up to uh, three, five, seven yards. So we're almost up to a single yard of content here now and again soaking every layer down as you go activating those that biome that's in there we're going to be getting a lot of stuff active in here with air and moisture over the next several days next few weeks It'll be three or four weeks, I'm suspecting. It might take me a little longer because I'm not doing it exactly right, but I'm hoping that it will be very cool. Now, we're just doing the lasagna layers this time, so there's a layer of green down in the middle of there right now. We're gonna get another layer or two of green before we're done. And it's kind of separated, but next time when we flip it, it'll start getting mixed. And we put this pile over here. And that'll be in the next section of this video. You'll get to see it right away because I'm doing this as a edited video. But by the time we flip this thing a couple times, it will be thoroughly mixed. Absolutely thoroughly mixed. There's a second layer of grass clippings. So it's a total of four, two brown and two green layers. Had some leaves in this batch, but it's okay. So I'm up to about one and a half yards, maybe slightly under of material in this pile right now. I just put on the third layer of black, of the brown stuff. So it's brown, green, brown, green, brown now. I'm gonna have another layer to go on top of here uh, for green. I think I'm gonna only have one more layer from this uh, yard I'm cutting. I'm actually going over and cutting it in the middle of this video. So, um, but you can see I've got a little bit of a flat top here. And the hose, and like he said, uh, when you think you got enough water, you don't. Double that, triple that, whatever. You got you have plenty, plenty of water. now. When I'm done here, this is gonna get covered over with a tarp and stay covered 
for a few days for it. Well, it's going to stay covered during the whole process, but uh, I'm going to have it covered for the next four or five days until we do the first flip. <laughs> A friend gave me this uh, little sprinkler head. I'm gonna use this while I go cut the grass again. See if it makes my job a little easier. I'll leave that for about 20 minutes while I go finish cutting the lawn. That second bin had a lot more grass in it than it looked like probably, but uh, there's a lot of grass there and a bunch of leaves, but uh, we'll, we'll make it work and maybe have to turn it over for another week past the 18 days, but that's not kind of, that's actually kind of what I'm expecting anyway. So it will be no surprise. The, uh, the big thing is to get this nice and wet and get it one more layer of, uh, the uh, bedding horse bedding compost on top of it wet it down one more time and then cover it with a tarp so here we go <laughs> Well, I don't think I have quite two yards in there. Two yards would be 54 cubic feet of material. You think about a large bag of compost you get from the garden center, that's two cubic feet. Well, right now this is just under 54 cubic feet. It'll probably uh, condense down into a bit less than that just because as it, as it uh, processes, it will become smaller. So I might end up with um, a full yard, probably a little less. So a yard is 27 cubic feet. And um, that would be, good grief, 14 bags of, uh, or 13 bags of uh, compost from the nursery. And I'll take it. I'll take it if it's 10 bags. So <laughs> I'd be happy with that. So anyway, I'm gonna cover this over with a tarp. Wait five days, wanna join me?
it has been five days since the last frame and uh, we're gonna do some work on here because it's time so this is uh, nothing has been touching this has been covered I left it covered and the bees are still out here so hopefully I don't have to run from the bees hey <laughs> uh, they later in the season they tend to get uh, possessive of their blueberries that, that was my experience last year uh, we'll have to see what happens this year I, I didn't have the bees when there were this many blooms out <laughs> so we'll have to see how long I can last without putting on a bee suit so anyway <sighs> Let's uh, uncover this and uh, get to flipping. Here we go. So the very first thing I noticed is how moist everything still is. It is very moist. Uh, looks like all the humidity has been maintained inside the pile. And so next thing we need to do is I want to take the temperature of the pile and see if anything's happening yet. So you can see here. Now this is just a cheap uh, thermometer, but it's up to 120 degrees. Now, um, I went back and watched all of the videos from Billy over at Permapastures Farm. And one of the things they warned against is uh, using city water. And oops, I use city water on this one. So um, I don't have a, another way to get enough water to do something like this. Uh, they did say that they had someone that they were troubleshooting with that had used city water that they couldn't get their pile warm. Now, you don't need a thermometer, though this is just a cheap thermometer from a big box store. Um, you can see it's so long, it goes down inside there. What it has, it has a filament, uh, a filament with uh, two metals and it twists uh, when exposed to the temperature and it shows you the rough temperature. So uh, it's actually uh, about 70, mid 70s out here right now, maybe a little higher. You'll see here in just a minute. But um, anyway, you don't have to have one of these. Stick your hand on the pile. If it feels hot, you're doing good. Uh, so they got their pile up to about 150 degrees. I'm hoping for that. I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. Uh, again, I'm not doing it quite right, but you know, one of the things that uh, um, I, I really feel strongly about is, you know, there's a lot of ways to do this stuff. A lot of people with their own ways, and that's fine. Uh, this method may not work for a guy in another area, and that's fine too. Uh, you gotta tweak it and figure out your ways. If you like to do the one-year compost, do the one-year compost. Do, do what you, you're comfortable with. I'm doing the one-year compost, but I'm kind of in a uh, bind because I need a lot more, uh, compost pretty quick and I'm making myself another uh, uh, pile here so uh, yeah it's a little spread out I'm gonna work to get this thing uh, more um, piled straight up and uh, the whole idea you want to get this stuff on the outside on the in, on the bottom center of the next pile so the more on the outside it is the more in the bottom center you need to pile it up and so that's what I'm gonna do here um, another thing I didn't do I didn't kick in the pile uh, I was tired that day when I did that because I was mowing the grass too. I'm going to try to kick in the pile a little better this time. I do have my, my rake over here. Oh, there is one thing I want to show you. So the use of different tools, uh, and, and this is kind of important. As you're using tools and doing this stuff, you want to make sure you're using the tool that's not going to wear you out the most. Uh, you know, it may not feel like one shovel full uh, is taking too much work, but if one is a little harder than another, you really need to uh, look for the easiest way because if this is two yards, that's 200 uh, shovelfuls. That's a lot of shovelfuls. It's kind of like running a marathon. You got to pace yourself. And so let me just show you. So here's a normal, this is what people say, oh, use, use yourself a spade. And you can. I'm not saying you can't. By all means, I'm not saying you can't. Use a spade if that's all you've got. You don't have to go buy a fork, but I do wanna show you, watch how this thing goes into the pile. Okay? It barely poked about halfway through the pile. That means you gotta kinda of work it in there a little bit to get, get it. Uh, let's use the straight, <laughs> the straight shovel. I know what this is gonna do. It did less. <laughs> 
it didn't even get a third of the way because of the straightness of it. And 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 mind you, uh, my shovels are sharp, so uh, yeah, that's saying. So I actually file down my shovels to be nice and sharp. Now watch this fork. Watch this. All the way in, no work. I just let the shovel do it, get it all the way in, and that's going to simplify the task of, of, of doing this because it's just a lot easier to do. So if you have a fork, uh, if you have the wherewithal to get a fork, great. Uh, if you're doing a lot of compost like this and uh, you see the shovel doesn't go in easy, that's why they use a fork like this. So I'm gonna use a fork and I'm gonna turn this. And now the biggest thing about turning this is uh, you're, you're introducing air into the system. You really want to introduce more air into this. And so uh, one of the things that uh, Billy made a point of it and, and it's an eight-part series this video series So I'm actually gonna link to all eight of those videos in order in the description below uh, It's really a good summary. They did a great job Bill and Billy and William uh, his son just did a fantastic job explaining everything through that whole process and uh, It's worth watching if you have a need to do this quick compost kind of thing. So when you're doing this, you're going to have to, and he says, you're going to give a little pop. Uh, and and you, here, let me just show you what he, what he does. And this actually just fluffs it up. You want to be able to fluff it up, get more air into it, because that's what's going to get all those microbes excited again. They got more oxygen. They're ready to go. They go another round. Now, we waited five days to do this flip. Today is Thursday, okay? From now on, we need to flip this every two days. Now, you do it every two days for the ultimate up to day 17. And first people, first thing person says is, oh, that sounds like a lot of work. Hey, if you don't need this much compost this fast, don't do it that way. My one year compost over there, I flipped it a total of two times, maybe three. I think it might've been three times, but it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful stuff. Now this stuff isn't gonna be quite as beautiful as that, but it's gonna be just as ready uh, according to Billy. So we'll have to see. Watch to the end of the video because I'm putting this all in one video here. But um, one of the big things he said is be mindful. If you work with nature, you'll get greater rewards. If you work against nature, you're going to work five times harder. Five times harder. And so you want to figure out how can we work with nature. And this is nature. This is how nature does it. We're just encouraging it to go a little faster here. And uh, so it's going to take a little work. There's, there's this trade-off. You can do the slow method over there and not do as much work. You can do this faster method and do a little, put a little more labor into it. So that's what I'm opting to do here because I need the compost. Whew, that was a beat. Yeah. Now there, there. Okay, so I can touch a bud. That's how close I am to it here. So hopefully I won't need to go get my bee suit. Uh, whew, wow. If a, if a bee buzzes the camera, you, you, you'll know why. But anyway, so... Watch what I do with this first full, first shovel full. You see how I pop that and fluff it up a little bit? That gives more air, makes it even more aerated, which is going to be even better for the compost. So this is the first flip. And um, yeah, so let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do here. I got to remember to talk to the camera. Ooh, big old bumblebee. Uh, got to remember to talk to the camera. So we're gonna, I'm gonna try to speed this up a little bit in my editing software and so you can kind of get an idea of, of what's happening. Okay, so you see I took the outer several inches, uh, probably three to six inches worth of this pile, kind of a shell of it, and I piled it up. I did pile it up a little taller this time, so hopefully I won't get a complete failing grade. 
for this pile of compost. I am encouraged though. Uh, I did see a couple of worms already. So one was just very, woo, very lively. And so, um, and that's another reason to not use a shovel, but a fork, because you're less likely to slice a worm in half. But uh, yeah, there's a little bit of steam coming up in a few places here. So I'm very excited about this. So I've got the whole outer shell of the original pile put onto this new pile. And now I'm going to get, uh, I'm gonna basically work my way down. I put the pile a little too close because there's, there's about a, maybe about that much of the older stuff that I'm not gonna get out. I'm not gonna worry about it this time. Uh, we got most of it is, is gonna be flipped. Uh, might have to make a make a uh, make sure to get that on the next one problem is I don't want to get too close to these blueberry bushes and disturb these bees too much because the kind of I, I'm afraid they're gonna get aggressive and I don't want to have to go get the uh, the bee suit yet <laughs> but uh, yeah so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna work my way down to the next you know six six inches or so of the pile and then then the last inner the actual inner portion of the pile will put on the top of this so yeah kind of flipping it inside out that's that's what it boils down to now one thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to flatten out the top of this a little bit and this is another maneuver that uh, billy and william taught is how to make this pile a little more receptive to more stuff and basically Kind of make it look like a little uh, volcano. So yeah, I just kind of spread out the top, I pull it out, make it, you see this little dip in there now? Well, I'm gonna go start putting in the next layer here now. Here we go. Okay, so there we go. Uh, one thing I did notice, I didn't do the little volcano thingy with the fork as much. And uh, I did notice that the pile actually stays tighter now, which uh, kind of surprised me. Um, I am excited with all the worms I saw in there. There's a number of worms in there and we will look forward to that. So this is the first flip, day five. Uh, today is Thursday. Saturday, I got a do this again. Now here's the part I hadn't told you yet. Anybody who's followed me know when I go in, I go all in. Um, I currently have another pile at the church building, very similar to this one. And I will be starting another, a second pile uh, at the church building as well. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have three of these going at one time, about the same size. Um, this is almost two yards. And the, ones, the one at the building is probably a tad larger. Uh, I think it's probably just over two yards. And I'm doing two of them. So there'll be two that are over two yards at the church building. So I will uh, turn the camera on again when I'm flipping this again. And then we'll take a trip down to the church building and see what those look like. Uh, well, okay, full disclosure here. Um, the first pile at the church building will be have its first flip on Saturday. The second pile will actually get started on Saturday and I have to go cut another yard. So <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be exhausted again. Anyway, 
There we go, nice tall pile. I'm gonna cover this back over. Notice no more water. Uh, this thing is ready to go. I'm very excited about the, 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 the life in it. In fact, let me see what the temperature says. It should be significantly lower because we introduced a lot of cool air into it. And that should really excite those uh, aerobic uh, processes, the, the, all the biome that's in there, all the little uh, munchy, munchers that chew stuff and convert things to be ready for plant take up. Uh, so uh, yeah, it looks like it's coming up to eh, just over 100 degrees, not as much as I thought. So it, it, it lost not quite 20 degrees. and. Uh, it will be good. So I'm going to cover it over. The nice thing, because it's a tighter pile, I have more space over there to flip it over the other way and hopefully not get on top of the, uh, the, 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 you know, the pile, you know, hopefully I'll have more room to do a better flip than I did this time. I'm not too impressed with uh, how I did it because of that overlap. Um, but again, remember I am in the process here of learning and, uh, the day you stop learning is the day you die. And so, uh, I'm, I'm very convinced that uh, this is gonna work. I'm, I'm a little excited. This may just work just fine. So I thought maybe because I didn't start out, and yeah, and that's the thing. Um, go watch Billy's videos. Uh, he has a lot more uh, information covered in this, a lot more information. I'm just, this is my first time, I'm just documenting. And again, this channel is just my personal documentation, my personal log of what's going on in the garden. So I can go back and look and see what happened. One day I'm going to say, oh, I need another 18 day compost. How long did that take me to do it the way I did it? And I can go back and look at this video and say, oh, okay, it took me X amount of days and I can get excited. I can get to work. Uh, but yeah, so there it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's holding steady at about 102 degrees, but uh, maybe 104. Yeah. Yeah, 104 degrees. So that's not surprising. I did uh, um, give every, almost every single one a pop. If you watched very closely, you can see there at the very end, uh, I didn't give it a pop, the stuff I was raking because it was already well aerated. And I did notice um, on this pile, remember when we did this, it was lasagna layers. So it was all grass in a layer and then all brown stuff. Well, this time, almost everything is incorporated now. So. Um, it's very well stirred up. And that's one thing that Billy did say on this first flip, you're really going to start stirring things up. There are a few chunks of grass left and I tried to break up as much as I could, but they weren't big chunks. They were these little flat things and I tried to break them up and I didn't really worry about it too much because on the second flip, all that's going to be taken care of. I'm sure. So two days, Saturday, <sighs> see you then got three piles to deal with. All right. So we're here Saturday, March something, first Saturday in March, and it's time for the second flip of this pile. And I'm a little excited to see what the temperature is because it's supposed to be a little higher than last time if I'm doing it right. So let's see what the temperature on this thing has gotten up to. I'm a little disappointed. Got up to 120 degrees and uh, I was hoping for getting into the red there, but it didn't. So I know my proportions are probably not the best. So my neighbor over here behind the PVC fence keeps a lawn that looks better than a golf course. And uh, he just cut his grass this morning and he's given the next donation for this experiment. So I'm going to incorporate this in. I know it's gonna mess things up but I'm kind of curious if it will help boost the temperature. This is just the second flip, so I'm, I'm being impatient. I know it's what I talk against, but here we go.
So there we go. Second flip is done. Woo. I did water down those new clippings. Um, so, cause it would have been too dry, I think. There was good moisture in there, not as much as the first flip had, but there was still good moisture. One thing to remember is we're sitting on many, many, many feet of sand, which just drains the water away. So I may actually have to add a little more water than some places, especially anywhere with clay soil. So anyway, the other thing um, there was, oh yeah, I did check the temperature inside the core. Um, and it was about the same. There was, there was a very little couple degrees difference. So uh, we'll see if the extra grass clippings uh, do anything for it. Again, we are using city water, I know. Uh, all in this video, um, this is an experiment. We're trying to see what we can do with what we have, which is why I added the grass cuttings because it's what I had. Uh, but yeah, we'll flip this again in a couple days. Today is Saturday, whatever the date is. Um, I need to get the date. It is uh, March 4th. <laughs> okay, so one of the garden tours came out today. By the time this comes out, there's actually gonna be two shorter videos on this process from the piles at the church building. So we'll have to see how those go. Uh, yeah. One of them I'm doing without a tarp, simply because I didn't have one at the time. And I actually, well, I'll talk about that in another video. Or I did talk about that in another video at the, at the, at the point this comes out. So yeah, flip number two, five more flips to go. Yee. You know, there's, there's three ways to get this done. Number one, I could pay someone to do it. And that gonna get expensive and uh, I'm not prepared to spend that kind of money on something that this is what I want to do. This is what I'm enjoying doing. So that's the first way. Second way is to have patience. And uh, I actually normally do have patience. I didn't have patience with this phase. I know, I know I'm going to get beat myself up uh, over it for a little bit, but not much. But, uh, and the third thing is to put a lot of extra work into it, which is what this is. So we're just putting an extra work into it, trying to get this compost faster. Uh, the piles at the church building, well, you can see in the other videos, uh, one's about this size and one's a bit larger. So hopefully we don't have a fire. It's not three yards. It's, it's right at two yards, but uh, I don't think we'll have a fire, especially not after these results. Uh, I have a feeling that the uh, chemicals in the city water would probably keep that down. The soil does look a little better, um, better than it did when it started. It's starting to get incorporated. Uh, there's a little bit of life in there which is nice and yeah so i may or may not show the next flip or two but i will continue to keep count and uh let you know in the video where we're at so here comes the next flip that i'm recording i'm gonna go down and record more of the video at the church building so here we are getting ready for the third flip and i had to share the temperature Looking like, uh, what's that, 124? A little hotter than it was, that's exciting. I do notice there's some seedlings growing like right there, but with the tarp over it, they should die pretty quickly. There's one there and I saw another one here somewhere. I don't see it now. But yeah, hopefully with the tarp, it will take care of all the seedlings. Where did that other one go? Anyway. Moving right along, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this. I'm not gonna do it on video, but this is March 6th. I'm gonna try to get it flipped today. I am getting ready to flip the pile at home before the third time, and it's broken 130 degrees. It's like maybe 134, 133. That's exciting. So here we are in the side garden, looking at this compost on the 12th day of its life. It's about to have its fourth flip right now. And as you can see, the temperature is sitting right about 128 degrees. The last temperature was at, oh, there's 129 degrees. Last temperature was on day 10. 
So as frequently happens, life gets in the way. And uh, we got a little under a full yard of uh, compost here for an 18 day compost. This is March 19th. Uh, I started this pile on February 25th, so this thing is uh, 22 days old. However, I've been unable to flip it for a week and am going to flip it today. Um, I did take the temperature and the temperature has dropped as expected because it's, uh, it's losing activity and it's kind of coming to the end of its life, but I'm gonna go ahead and flip it today. And um, so, and see if we can <laughs> get, uh, still get something out of this. I, I mean, I know we can get something out of it. Worst comes to worst, you leave it for a while, right? And, uh, and all, but uh, so it's a cold, uh, cold, chilly day very cold day for the panhandle of florida but uh, anyway i'm just gonna flip this thing and move along it's been uh, like i said it's been a week since i've missed the uh one two three four the fifth turn so this thing needs three more turns before it's supposed to be ready according to the 18 day compost procedure and uh, yeah here we go <laughs> So there was still a lot of moisture in that pile, which I'm very happy about. I was really kind of worried that it got dried out, but it is coming to the end of its life. In fact, it should have already been at the end of its life. So the fact that it's cooled down doesn't really bother me in the least. Um, I'm a little disappointed I couldn't get on top of it a little better and keep the heat at least one more flip. Uh, this will be flip number five on this, on this pile. And uh, about now is when, uh, the fifth flip is about when it would have uh, started, just started coming off that peak and started coming down. Um, if you've watched some of the shorts that we did on this at the two piles at the church building, the uh, back pile is the one that really carried the heat. I was very happy about. And uh, this one's gonna be my own personal downfall, I think, but we'll have to see if it gets a little any more heat 
it uh, got up to, it, or it, when I first started, it was at about 90 degrees. Eh, it's a, it's a 55 degree um, day out right now, so it's kind of cool. It's going to get really cold tonight. I don't think it's supposed to freeze. Uh, we shall see. It's not, well, it's, no, it's not supposed to freeze. Uh, and uh, so we shall see what really happens. Uh, we got about 10 degrees colder on Christmas Eve morning. Uh, so we'll have to see where it goes. Anyway, continuing right along with this uh, longer format video to see how this works. And uh, yeah, next time. So here we are with a bunch of jars of compost and the uh, experiments have concluded. We have uh, one pile here at the house, which I've got in this jar marked H. We have another pile, uh, another two piles at the church building, which are marked one and two. The front one is one, the back one is two. I have one marked O for original. This is the original stuff we got from the equestrian center. And then finally, we have an R, which is uh, another pile at the church building that someone else was running with the original uh, horse bedding compost, but they had added a lot of coffee grounds to it, a lot. So I'm really curious to see how that does. And then there's one jar in here marked C, and this, which I've got to put a little more in here before I put the water in, but this is from my compost bin, the really, really good compost with, um, oh, I know it's full of worm castings, and other things that have broken down uh, in the in the, my compost bin, some of which is years old. So we're got, basically what we do here for this soil sample is we're going to fill these with water, shake them up real good, going to let them settle a few days, and uh, at that point we're going to look and see what kind of layers we got. And I'm curious to see if we have any layers at all, number one. Uh, number two, if there's any difference, particularly between the two compost bins, 18-day compost bins at the church building and the one here at the house. Now, the one here at the house did not get flipped as often as it was, should have been. Uh, the ones at the building all were flipped seven times, and but they were not flipped in as timely a manner as they should have been. So we didn't follow the rules on anything, I admit, okay? <laughs> So we're, we're basically just doing the best we can to see what differences we can see. And remember, this channel, it's my personal logs. I want to be able to see this and see what happened in the future. But uh, yeah, I'm going to fill all these with water. And in a few days, we'll come back here and record the results. And that'll be the end of the video. Yeehaw! So here we are a few days later. First chance to record the conclusion to this, and yes, this is the conclusion. I know this video is getting long. We're at 50 something minutes, I think right at 50 minutes and so many seconds. But I just wanted to show you what we have in these mixes, uh, what's settled out. Now, this first jar here, now there's a lot of reflection, but I'm trying to get as close to everything that you can see in here, and, and this is very fine particulate. Now this bottle here is my really good compost. And from bottom to top, it is really fine particulate. You'll see down here at the bottom, there's actually a little bit of sand mixed in, which is really good for extra drainage. Um, I believe that is a layer of clay, that dark line right there. And I'm gonna have that confirmed by a good friend of mine that does these uh, soil samples frequently. And I, but I, I really, I, I'm very surprised. I had not seen, right now I'm zoomed all the way in on my camera and I can see what's in there. And yeah, I mean, that really looks like a layer of clay and everything in here is the real fine particulate of my own compost, which would just come out beautiful. I've, I've never had compost that beautiful. In fact, there's uh, dead worms in there. There's a few little roots. Most of that's dead worms. There was a worm swimming around in there about 48 hours after I did this still, but I think they drown eventually. Uh, so now let's go to this next jar. And this next jar um, is 
Let me zoom out just a little bit. Oop, 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 oop. Hang on, hang on. Trying to get adjusted here. Uh, but this is all big material. There is a small layer at the top of fine particulate that came with, that probably came with. Now, I'll admit there was some composting that happened while it was sitting there at the equestrian center, but this is all large stuff and there's no tiny stuff in the bottom. There is, I mean, you can see just a fine line of a little bit of sand at the bottom and that's it. But uh, yeah, so all big chunks, which is what I expect. This is the original stuff we started with. So now we're gonna move over and, and, and now this is pile number one at the church building. And these piles, it, it, there is a playlist. In fact, I'll link in the cards and I'm gonna link in the description to the playlist of all these videos for the 18 day combos because there's short, there's, um, there's longer videos. Uh, there's several videos. This is kind of the conclusion of all of it. And so um, you can take a look at all the videos and see all the information. We deal mainly with our home compost in this one, but if you look down here at the bottom, we have a little bit of sand that got, uh, most of that probably got picked up in the flipping process. Um, I really can't tell if there might be a layer, a very thin layer of clay in there, but um, there is about, look at there, about a thumbnail length of fine particulate at the top. Now, the reason why this fine particulate is important, there's two reasons. Number one, um, this is the stuff that your plant will directly be picking up, directly, because it's been processed into a form your plants can ingest through their roots. So that's why we're looking for this fine particulate in here, this organic uh, processed stuff. Now, Interestingly enough, there's there's a little there are pockets of this um, processed stuff, and you can see in a couple of areas here, um, it goes from there to there, and then there's still a lot of wood chips, which I expected. Now, what I was very dis now, and I remember uh, this pile only got up to 120 degrees, and it was just I was very disappointed in how this pile did, but and I thought, oh, this next pile over here. The pile number two, the back pile at the church building, I thought, oh man, this thing is rocking it. This thing is just going to be amazing. And so, number one, we got some sand at the bottom, maybe a tiny, tiny sliver of clay in there. Uh, but yeah, you can see the sand right there at the very, very bottom, right, to, right up to there. A lot of unprocessed wood chip, but <laughs> let me see if I can get my reflection out of the way here. Um, there, the layer of processed stuff is minuscule. <laughs> there is very little here, very little. Um, in fact, I would say, you know, less than half the length of my fingernail deep right there. Over here, the one that I was less impressed with in the process, uh, it has a lot more processed material already. So um, I'm gonna have to do some more experimenting to figure out why the pile that reached over 135 degrees and was more on schedule uh, didn't do as well as the pile that got a little bit more mist in the flips. They all got uh, seven flips, but um, yeah, it was it was interesting. Now, th when I took these samples, this pile was three days, uh, three or four days older. So this this pile did get a little bit extra time uh, but it, uh, it, it, yeah, it, it, it didn't get, um, yeah, I didn't get the right, the absolute right, uh, schedule according to, um, the pros on this. So, uh, now let's look at the home compost, our compost at the house. Now, uh, I got a disappointment coming up here in just a minute, but, um, uh, looky here. Now look at the bottom we have some particulate matter at the bottom. There is a little bit of sand at the bottom, bottom, bottom down here. Uh, it is very hard to see, but it's that thin, thin line right at the bottom of the glass. 
There is particulate matter, uh, probably a centimeter, a little over, right around half an inch, maybe a little more of particulate matter here that I did not see. Okay, I take that back. Uh, there is some more particulate matter down here. Again, this is the stuff that's been processed, that is ready to be uptaken, and this is the front pile at the church building. It does have a, quite a bit of particulate matter in here. Uh, my pile at the house only got flipped five times. The schedule was not kept. Uh, it actually started three days before the first pile at the church building, so it's been a little bit longer, and it's got a really thick layer of particulate matter at the top. Now remember, it, all these piles got started with the same material. So um, the one at the house, I, I have to conclude that, I mean, I agree this 18 day compost, which is, you know, Berkeley process um, of making fast compost, um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of advantage in not flipping it seven times to flipping it seven times to it being too old or, or a little bit older. Um, it really boils down to, you know, it still comes out really good. Maybe get a flip or two in there. Uh, this thing here only got flipped five times and I was disappointed that I couldn't get it all the way done properly, but um, I'm actually surprised that, and, and this one was kept to the schedule. This thing here was kept as close to the schedule as I could. I think there was a extra, in fact, instead of 18 days, this one was 21 days, I counted up. Um, so this was the closest to the original process and it's the poorest. And so, and then this one here, was the worst job and it actually did really good. I just flipped it five times over a 28 day period, I think it was ultimately. Uh, and it did really good. There's only about that much unprocessed material in here. Uh, but this fine particulate matter at the top and at the bottom is ready for plant uptake. Now, here's the thing about this. This is using this right now is actually a good thing because this any of these will be a slow feed for your plants. It's got some stuff that's ready to go, ready to be eaten right now, and it's got stuff that's going to be processed, and it's got the biology to process that. So this stuff is could go in your garden right now. Any of it could go in the garden. But I do like the fact that um, we have more uh, of the small, already pr fully processed material here in the top. And you can see right there, that's all the fully processed stuff down here at the bottom and even more fully processed stuff. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure. I might try this again in the future, but maybe not be so hard on myself for not keeping the schedule exactly. Uh, I'd love to, one day I'm going to, catch up and, and it really is killing me because there's a uh, there's a homesteaders meetup right now not far from me that we can't get to because uh, we are leaving town uh, in a couple days and we just can't get there but I know uh, Billy at Perma Pasture Farms is actually <laughs> there I would have loved to show him these results uh, now you'll notice there is an extra jar over here and this one, um, this was the interesting one. It's actually a little bit older than the home one. And the, I, I say a little bit older. Um, it's probably a few weeks older than the home one, which is the oldest one. And that, remember that was at four weeks. This is probably six, eight weeks old. Uh, but this is my gardening friends, direct, original, same stuff, folks, same exact stuff. It's actually been sitting a while. Oh, no, this stuff is older than that. This stuff is probably uh, three months old when I took this sample. He put coffee grounds in here, a lot of them. I mean, a big tub of them. I'm talking a few gallons of coffee grounds that a friend gave him. And again, you'll see a little bit of sand at the bottom. There's not so much particular stuff at the bottom. There's a lot of wood chip still in here. 
about that much wood chip, but look at this stuff at the top. This already broken down stuff, ready to go. Uh, that's just good looking. Oh my goodness, that's surprisingly good looking. So he didn't do anything with this, okay? He didn't do anything with this except put it out in a conical frustum. <laughs> go back and look at the video on geometric shapes. Uh, he put it in a conical frustum. It did decent. Uh, I think um, I think my home compost may have a little bit more particulate matter in the top and the bottom uh, than this, but it may be microscopic. It actually did really good. And so I'm, um, I'm becoming a proponent of just take your time. Just take your time and let it play out. Let your compost play out. Uh, I do my own compost down here at the end. This is really good stuff. I love this stuff. My garden is loving this stuff. Um, I'm just going to have to do better about uh, getting good compost throughout the year. I did have a period of time I should have gone and sought out more compost. Uh, I thought, well, I don't have time to do that. I should have made time one day just to go get a load and have it processing ahead of time. That would have been a good thing. So that's the conclusion of my experiment. 18-day um, compost, uh, not a lot of major advantage of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's better than, it, it is definitely better than the original. And this, this here, nothing was done. This was just the original stuff sitting out there, exposed, very little happened. I mean, it did a lot. Uh, it didn't do much more than this stuff that had been sitting for two or three times longer. In fact, it didn't, I was, I was hoping for, you know, exponential amount of change, but it wasn't as much of a change. In fact, this one here, the one that was done as close to right as I think I could get it. Uh, that was the poorest performer. <laughs> so anyway, that's the conclusion. Yep. We're going long here and I know it. Um, I, we try to get things, uh, we do a lot of short videos. We do some long videos. We do reels, shorts and reels. Um, hopefully these will speak to somebody. Uh, this, this, uh, if you're stumbling along and finding this vid, just finding our channel, please, oh, please subscribe. Every subscription helps. And those of you who have subscribed, wow. Thank you so much for continuing on. And if you're still watching, thank you so much for watching these videos. Every one of these things helps grow the channel. Uh, click the thumbs up on this video, share it on your social media accounts. If you have friends that you think might benefit from the information given here, again, I know we're, uh, we're at 65 minutes into this video, so it's a long video. And, uh, if you're still here, then, then uh, hey, hats off, kudos to you. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, I, I, I'm always saying, ask in the comments. Uh, if you've had any experiences you think, think might uh, help with this process, I would love to hear it. Uh, one of these days, I'm hoping to get together with Billy at Permanent Pasture Farms and ask him a couple questions, and we will have to look forward to that day. So, anyway, whew. This is Bowtie Dave with a very long video. It's taken weeks to make this video. And I'm it's these videos are hard work. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining along and taking part. Everyone have a blessed day. Mm -hmm.